Hi guys and welcome to another Bootstrap 4 video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, we're going to continue on where we left off yesterday, which is we were exploring sections and containers. Today we're going to work on rows and columns. So let's get started. I'm going to open my brackets text editor. Brackets is a free text editor. You can download it from a link below this video if you need one. Or if you've already got a text editor, you can follow along just fine with that one. So let's go down to where we were working yesterday, which was these two sections with the colored backgrounds. Let's just get rid of that second one there. Just going to go ahead and delete that one and save control s to save back to the site and when i refresh we should just be left with the red and the yellow here there we go okay so yesterday we described how to build the con the section and how to use a container to confine a div stop it from being full width and we also covered a bit of padding and margins today we're going to uh, have a look at columns and rows so if you look at this yellow block we'll call that a row and within this row we want to make a few different columns now bootstrap whether you've got it full width or whether you've got it in a container right here a row is made up of 12 equal sections so if you want two columns in there you can have a column of six and a column of six or if you want one bigger and smaller, you can have a column of four and a column of eight, as long as it totals 12. And I'll just demo that for you. Let's go to our brackets. Now you'll notice what I'll do now is I'll put in a couple of divs without a row and you'll see what happens. So I'm gonna put in a div. I'm gonna give it some style. Like I said, I don't usually do this, but we're doing it for demo purposes. I'm going to give it uh, a background and a minimum height. So I'm just going to steal that from there. This is just so we can actually see the thing. Okay, and let's make this one green. And I'm going to copy that. I'm going to do another one. And I'm going to put it underneath. And I'm going to make this one blue. So we've got our container. That's our yellow section right there. Now I've added a green little div and a blue little div. Now when I refresh, if I save that is, let's just check I've saved that. Control S to save, I didn't actually save it. Uh, when I refresh, we should see these two new divs that I've added, a green and a blue. And there they are. By default, they're on top of each other. Now what if we want them side by side? Well, what we have to do is turn that into a row because when you create a new div, it's automatically going to stack them like that. So what we can do is we can wrap these two in another div and give it the class of row to tell it this is all one row. So if I start div class equals and write row, R-O-W, inside there close out that div now we need to take this closing div and put it on the end of our colored divs that we created just now to sort of wrap them inside of it right there i'm going to select these two just to make it easier to read with the coding i'm going to just tab them across a little bit now we've wrapped them in our row what we want to do Let's give them a class and tell them how big we want them. Remember I said it's got to be 12. We'll give them 6 and 6. So I'm going to give them a class. 
equals column col medium I'm going to say 6 so that's basically going to be half of a half of a screen width and I want to do the same with our one below so that's the other half save that let's go back and see what happens now there we go we've got our two divs a six and a six and they're taking up half each of our available width now we could take our container away and they still take up half each that's what we put in yesterday we'll just take that word container away and save go back refresh you'll see they're now full width and they're still taking up half so six and six is still taking up half the available space let's go put that container back in and save okay so let's make them different sizes let's say we'll make this first one four and the second one eight it's kind of four twelfths and eight twelfths if you like go back and remember I put my container back in there so it'll be within this contained section here so you've got a four and you've got an eight if you want to add a third one let's grab another one here and I apologize about the random colors I'm choosing here let's make this one black Now, right now, if I leave it like that, we've got a four, an eight, and another eight. Now, once it gets past the 12, it's gonna bust down to a new line. So let's save that and see what happens. There we go, there's our black one. So we got our four, our eight, another eight, and that's actually just the background there. That's not another one you could put another four after it and continue building and it'll actually build it up like that for you so that's basically the structure of columns and putting them into a row there let's just take this one away in fact let's take these two away and column me I've used medium because that means medium sized screen and you can have small extra small large extra large to make things do different things on different size screen but we'll deal with that in another video. So I'm going to take these two away. So now we're going to just be left with that small one. And uh, what color is it? Small green one. So if I refresh, all we're going to be left with is this green one on a yellow background there. Okay, so we've just got that. Let's say we want that perhaps to be on the right hand side it'll automatically if we put something like a column of eight before it we can push it over the right hand side but bootstrap 4 using the new flex box makes it a lot easier we can without we used to have to put in a column offset value to offset it by so many now what we can do is in our row class above it I can add a new class of say justify content end control s to save back to our site when I refresh this should now be on the right hand side there we are and by the same means you can say justify content center Control S back to the site. What do you think that's going to do? Yep, you guessed it. It's going to push it to the middle. And this will also work with two. So if I add another one, let's add another one, another small one. And I guess we'll make that one blue. Although we've got.
control s although we've got two that's not filling out the space because we've got justified sender it'll put them both in the middle there we go as you can see they're both in the middle there and they got equal space each side now we can do different things like we can um, make the space between them equal let's just add another one let's do it this way let's add one more and I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make these columns of three so there'll still be a bit of space there uh, so green blue black I guess and I'm just gonna say that control s and again because we haven't changed anything it's going to put the content center so let's just refresh there's our three our three columns of three and as as you can see it's put auto margins either side same content no change there but what we can actually do is is have it so there's equal space between them or we can have one left one middle and one right just by changing the terms um, so if I go back to my brackets, if I now put justify content between, that should equally space these out left, center, and right. So we got one left, one dead center, and one on the right. Really useful sort of flex thing here. And if you wanted um, to be spaced so that there was equal left and right space on each of them, you could just say, if we go back to our brackets, say justify content around. Control S to save. And there you have it. You've got I know it looks like there's a bit more there but you've got this much this side and you've got this much again this side but of course you've got this much the next one as well that's why it looks wider in the middle there but there is actually equal space around each of these modules so that's a few ways of adjusting things uh, using the bootstrap 4 with the flex system and also how to add columns and rows and like I say, if you just add more, it'll keep building them into rows below. You can just double up. So we can go back and you want to create another row, just copy it. The whole div. Drop down, add a new row. Drop down, add a new row. And then change, obviously, whatever the content is you want in between. And of course, in another video, we'll be adding some content this is just to explain the spacing for you save that back to the site refresh there we go it looks like we've got lines there's no space between the rows if I just go back and add uh, a bit of margin bottom on each of these rows M for margin B for bottom 5 I'll copy that I'll copy the gap as well the space Control C other bootstrap for new term which is margins you can just put M B for bottom T for top R for right L for left values between 1 and 5 5 being the most 1 being the least and it's measured in M's which I think is 16 pixels by default well, it's whatever your default paragraph text font size is that was a bit of a mouthful so let's save that and just refresh now we've actually got a gap there you see between our rows we created there so there you have it that's how to build rows and columns with bootstrap 4 I hope that's been useful to you we've also showed you how to justify the content and sort out the spacing in between those if you've enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up comment share and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're interested in web development take a look down below we've got some great free courses down there as well as some premium courses with some huge discounts for our YouTube subscribers, so do check it out. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have 
a great day.